Hey, Stola Hansen here. In this video, I'm going to talk about how you can use the Pomodoro technique in the context of your Teams client, how you can use to do, Power Automate, and set your Teams client in the Do Not Disturb custom focusing status. Check this out. In To Do, you can create a list called Pomodoro. In there, you can put a task with a number. That number represents the time you want to do your Pomodoro in. Could be 10 minutes, could be 15 minutes, could be 25 minutes. What happens in the background is that Power Automate takes that number and creates a new calendar event in your calendar, which is focusing time based on my analytics. And it will then set your Teams client in that custom focusing status making you unavailable in Teams and relaying to your colleagues that you are focusing on a task, which tells them that they shouldn't expect an answer from you within reasonable time. But I believe the most important thing is that you become available again. That is why I'm using this calendar event, because I don't believe in being unavailable for two hours. I believe in being unavailable for the time you're actually available and then become available again. I think that's really important because you can really go down into deep work, that flow state and forget about time, forget about place. And that's when you can stay productive over a long time. But the problem is that you're also unavailable for your colleagues. I use this so that I can jump start my flow state. So after 25 minutes, I will become available again, but if nothing happens, I will just continue working. Or I will go into that meeting I had planned to go into. Regardless, I am available, it's okay to get distracted again. And that's how I use a Pomodoro timer. This video is part of a five-part video series together with MVPs Lorian Strand and Dux Ryman Sai. In the first part, Lorian talked about the Pomodoro technique. So if you're new to the Pomodoro technique, go check out his video. He will talk about what it is and how he uses it in his everyday work. My routine is based on my analytics in Microsoft 365 which means that you need to have enabled and understand what my analytics is. In next video, Dux Ryman Sai will tell you all about my analytics. Now let's jump into my flow. A big part of the Pomodoro technique is to focus on that single task. And what we need to do to prepare for that is to clean our kitchen and find all the ingredients so we have them available. I believe spending some time optimizing your Pomodoro flow is well spent time. You can reuse it and I think you achieve two things. Number one, you're ready to focus. You have everything you need. You have all the ingredients. Your kitchen is optimized for you working effectively. Number two, this actually triggers a process for you, which means that, okay, I'm, now I'm starting my Pomodoro. I'm setting the expectation that, going, that I'm going to do deep work that are going to reach the flow state, that are going to focus. So psychologically, you are actually prepping your mind for that process. And I believe those two things really help you focus on that single task you want to do at that point in time. It is important for me that you succeed with this tool. That's why I'm going to show you how to import it and how to get started. It's a three-step process. Number one is to import the flow and get started with it. Number two is to tune a calendar event based on my analytics. And if you haven't started with my analytics yet, make sure you check out Dux's video on it. And number three, we're going to uh, make sure it works. So we're going to test it out in to do. Let's get started. We're going to go to my website because I blogged about this, where you can download this zip file from GitHub. I'm going to post the link in the description field below. At the blog post, you will see how it works. I have blogged how you can import it. I blogged how it will change the calendar event and set your focusing time. 
But at the top here, you see you can already download it. So you can go to GitHub and immediately, it's actually difficult to see what you should download, but you should download this zip file. By clicking on it, you will find a download button. It could be hidden for those who haven't done this before, but it's really very easy when you click into it. Next, we're going to go to flow.microsoft.com. By doing that, you get to the flow page. This is Power Automate, but it still is called a flow when you're importing it. So we're going to navigate to My Flows. There you can go and import it. When we're importing it, we're going to connect to a couple of connectors. I'm going to show you how to do those connectors. It's for Outlook, To Do and Notifications. Here we need to upload it and we're going to navigate to the zip file we downloaded. Here you see it's uploading the zip file and when it's ready we can click import. From there you have a couple of steps you need to do. First, what are we going to do when importing this? Are we going to update an existing one or are we creating a new? Typically we want to create a new and you can even define the name. I'm using the default name. Next, we need to connect the connectors. And the first one is for Outlook and Office 365. Here you see I already have a couple of connections, but I'm going to show you how to add a new one. So we create, click on Create New, which opens the page under Connections here. It will show you your existing connectors and you can create new ones. Here I want to create a new one. From there I can search for it and I want to search for Outlook. Office 365 Outlook is the one we want to choose. Then we need to authenticate towards it. Here you see it's getting my username and password. I'm already signed in, so I'm going to choose my buddy. And we are connected. Going back to the flow, I can click refresh. And here you see my latest addition. I'm choosing the latest one. Next, I'm going to import notifications. Notifications is not important though, but I'm going to use them to set my mobile phone to um, do not disturb. I'm not going to show you this in this video, but I'm going to show it to you when I do the PowerShell video. So in the step five of this five step video series, I'm going to show that. So click on that one if you want to see how that works. So going to notifications here, you see I already have notifications, but I'm create a, going to create a new one. Click on new connection search for notifications, choose it, authenticate for it, and we're good. Going back to my page and click refresh, and here I have my notifications. The final one is for to do. So here I have a couple of them already, but I'm going to create a new one. Here I have all my connectors. I'm going to click new connection, and I'm going to search for to do like this. And choosing that, clicking create, authenticating, and we're good. Going back to my site, click refresh, and I'm going to choose the latest one, six seconds ago. That's the one I'm choosing. Now we are ready to import the flow itself. Click import, and we're done. Let's click on my flows and review our new flow. Click on it, and then click edit. As you see, there's nothing here we need to do. We have imported our connectors and we uh, and this flow it works out of the box for you there's one thing you can do though and that is going into the ifttt integration and set it to zero because we are not going to use that in this example that's it click save and we are ready for the second step which is manipulating one calendar event which you want to use so I go to Outlook and we are ready for the second step, which is manipulating one calendar event which you want to use. So I go to Outlook. I found any of the focus time events I have already in my calendar. And if you don't have any focus time events in your calendar, they're typically in your language. They have the green category and they're created by my analytics. If you haven't done my analytics yet, check out Dux's video. I'm going to manipulate one event and so I'm just clicking on the first one here, expanding it. What I'm going to change here by clicking edit is I'm going to change the busy state of this event. I'm going to change it to working elsewhere. 
The reason for this is because we don't want to find all the events. We want to find those who are category green and have busy working elsewhere. And the reason for that is uh, that we are going to manipulate this event. Click save and we are ready to test this out. We're going to do that through to do. Here I have open to do. All you need to do is add five minutes as a task. That's it because we're checking for all tasks that have a number in them and no text. So it needs to be able to convert it to a number. The way I use it though, I create a custom list for this. So here I create a Pomodoro list and I'm going to use the emoji tomato as well. And here's a super tip. Windows and dot creates and opens this window. I'm going to search for tomato. You see I already searched for it, but I can search for tomato here and use that. And then I'm going to write Pomodoro as the name of the list. Move it up here on the work. And then here we can add a new timer. So 25 minutes, but you can add the, the, the interval you want to yourself. I recommend between 10 and 25 minutes, no more though. Uh, because that's more than 25 minutes, that's too long. Posting that, we can validate this by going back to to do and Power Automate. And here we can see that it's been run. I have a couple of tests already just to validate my demo here. But beware that it may ta take up to three minutes before it actually starts to run. And that's the way the trigger is made. Don't worry though because I've tuned the flow to start when the task was actually created. So don't think about this. So let's check back to Outlook. And here you see I'm recording this on a Sunday at 8.45 and the focusing time is there. Let's go to Teams and see my status. Here you see I'm switched to focusing mode and I am in Do Not Disturb. And this happens almost instantly as soon as the calendar event is in there. So no delays. How cool is this? Now I'm notifying my colleagues and peers that I am busy focusing. I'm deep diving, respect my time, but I will be available soon because they know me. They know that I run Pomodoros. So I will be available at least within 25 minutes. This is why I like running this as a calendar event I have control over, so I'm not just unavailable for hours and hours. I don't believe in that. Hope this inspired you to do more with Pomodoro. Check out the other videos we have on how to do it in Power Apps, how to do it in PowerShell, and check out the next video in this series by Dux, where he is going to talk about my analytics and what you need to set up to get started. Thanks for watching.